Hey ladies, I so wish I was gathered with you in person, that we were in the same room, that we were having coffee or watching our kids play, but I am so thankful for technology that will allow us to connect a little bit. You know, one thing I'm hearing over and over again as I process this bizarre season with women around me is the various levels of disappointment that we're dealing with in the wake of COVID-19. It has severely altered or even canceled several celebrations. So many birthdays were not spent the way that we thought they would be. Baby showers have been canceled. Even Easter, well, you can never cancel Easter. And of course, it caused celebration in our hearts to celebrate Jesus' rising. It just wasn't the same this year as we couldn't gather for corporate worship or sit around tables and feast together with friends and extended family. I know so many of you have expressed that work events for which you've been, you've put in hours of planning and prep have been canceled. Uh, some vacations that you were so looking forward to have been canceled. Some of us have lost our jobs or been furloughed for a time and many have worked so hard to graduate but won't have a ceremony to celebrate and mark those achievements. You may have lost visits with your grandchildren in these days. And God bless y'all who have had to postpone your weddings. I can only imagine the layers of complexity and heartache that this has caused. But other women have told me about disappointment that's been internal for them. Some of us are disappointed in our own response to this new life we're living. We're disappointed that we don't have more patience or grace or capacity to do what we need to in this time. And I've been thinking about how we have a few choices when we feel disappointed. Where there are several different things we can do with that disappointment. The first one is we can distract or numb ourselves to it. There are a few really accessible drugs of choice right now, um, a few being social media or Netflix and food. Screens are such a readily available place to ease the discomfort we feel internally about this whole mess. Immersing ourselves in someone else's story for a time allows us to momentarily forget the pain we feel. But when we turn off those screens or when we put down that phone, we're faced with our own sadness again. I'm sure we've all recognized that the pantry and the refrigerator are our constant companions while we're home all day. And I don't fully understand the connection between cravings and our emotional life, but I have had so many moments of feeling like maybe just one more snack or even better, more of those baked goods will help me feel grounded and settled right now. Clearly unneeded food fills our stomachs, but it leaves me feeling more empty every time. Another option we have is to just give in to our disappointment and allow its voice to become authoritative in our hearts. See, it's, it's one thing to feel disappointed. Clearly, we all do at times, but it's another thing to allow that disappointment to call the shots, to allow its voice to be louder than the promises of God. When disappointment reigns, we make false conclusions. We begin to functionally believe things like there is not good to be seen today in the land of the living, that God is withholding good from me or God doesn't see me right now. In short, what happens is we lose hope. Biblical hope is a confident expectation of something good in the future. It's rooted in the promises of God, and it is not dependent on our circumstances. When I've allowed disappointment to reign in my heart during this time, I have felt agitated and restless and some pretty overwhelming sadness. But praise God, there's a third option. We don't have to numb our disappointment. We don't have to give in to disappointment, but we can allow ourselves to feel our disappointments, to grieve them when we need to, and then to bring them to the Lord. After encouraging us to look upon the one whose gaze never leaves us, psychiatrist and author Kurt Thompson states, this does not mean we won't feel disappointed or that we won't experience great feelings of loss or anger, bargaining and acceptance, moving, moving as we will through the stages of grief. And we should feel these things. But rather than be buried by those afflicted feelings, our work is to lament what we have lost, to actively enter into grief with other people, enter into it in the presence of God who is with us, and so allow Him and others to love us in our loss, looking for God to create new things in the wake of all our distress. 
I can't get over how David did this so honestly in the Psalms. I've been really drawn to Psalm 61 and 62 in the midst of this COVID crisis. At the outset of Psalm 61, David says, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I love how David comes in desperation. He's crying out to God, and he gives us such wonderful words to what so many of us feel right now. He says, my heart is faint. I feel weak and overwhelmed and sad at times. And then a wonderful request. He says, I recognize that my stability doesn't depend on my own emotions. God, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And then in the next Psalm, Psalm 62, verse 5, he says, for God alone, O my soul, wait in silence for my hope is from him. So first, David lays out his faint heart before the Lord, and then he reminds himself of an essential truth that nothing or no one besides God gives him lasting hope. In our present context, this pause of expectation in the presence of God recognizes that our hope doesn't come from a full social calendar or shopping trips whenever we'd like or the freedom of making plans for the coming days or even in health in this life. No, God alone is the giver of our hope. So David says, I will wait for him And then he continues, He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. The Lord, ladies, He's your strong place. He is your sure thing and your secure footing. There is not a moment in this COVID crisis that He has been slumbering or wavering. Ladies, the Lord is your strong place. He is your sure thing and your secure footing. Not one moment in this COVID crisis has he wavered or slumbered. He's your rescuer. Your salvation in these days is not dependent on your ability to handle it all well and respond perfectly. Your salvation doesn't depend on avoiding exposure to this virus. You don't chiefly glory in earthly celebrations or accolades or relationships. On the Lord God Almighty rests your salvation and glory. So though you may feel very unstable in these days, you will not be moved. He is the stability of your times. David goes on to say in verse 8, Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. This reminds me of Hannah when she came to the temple to pour out her grief before the Lord about being barren. David's exhortation is a call for us to come as honestly as we can to the God who loves us perfectly, however raw we may be, and not numb our disappointment or allow it to speak authoritatively, but to lay it at the feet of the Lord. And there we find refuge, we find comfort, safety, covering and stability in the goodness of God's very presence. So let's move toward the Lord in our disappointments and grief. In His presence and by His grace, He moves us through disappointment and into hope. Hope nourishes our souls at the deepest level. Having hope changes It changes everything. Hope opens our eyes to kingdom realities. It enables us to see beyond the seen to the unseen. It makes us sensitive to the spirit as we lean into the Lord with expectation that he's on the move. Hope enables us to see past ourselves to our neighbors. It fuels us to meet pressing needs and it gives us a framework for living redemptively in the world. And hope enables us to persevere when nothing is as we plan and all seems outside our control. Hope allows us to experience the eternal joy that's ours as children of God and not dependent on our circumstances. And on a very practical level, I'm finding for myself that when I'm full of hope, I'm energized for the task of shepherding and teaching my children. Hope gives me the capacity for creativity in these days that's needed. Truly hope is an anchor for the soul. He is the God of all hope who can fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Let me pray for us. 
Father, we praise your name and we thank you that you are the God of steadfast love. You are the unchanging one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, I pray that you would so grace us that we would be willing to come honestly with our disappointments to you and that in the presence of your refuge and strength and steadfastness that you would move us on to hope. I pray we would be a people who have a full assurance of hope that brings joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.